Hey buddy, fancy a race against Boggy? Press A to accept or beat a chicken out. <clears throat> we are going to be way too slow without those race shoes in front of us. Okay, buddy, here's the rules. Run. Th yeah, we read all this before. If you try to do this without the, ra or without the uh, race shoes, it's freaking impossible and you're not going to win. I turned into Kazooie before because I think it saves it's like a minuscule amount of time, but I do it anyway. And basically the same thing here as with the... Uh, when you were the walrus. I think this one might be a little bit harder, but I can't be sure. When you're the little walrus, if you are on the sled and you slide into water, it's okay, you can come out of the water. If you were Banjo-Kazooie in the shoes though, and you fall in the water for whatever reason, you lose the shoes and thus that will make you lose the race. So, oh God. Boggy's a dick and he can knock you out of the way too, so always look out for that. But yeah, you've seen this race before. It's the same thing when the shoes... You don't have to worry about the shoes running out on you or anything. Just don't fall in the water. That's probably the most important thing. You can jump really far as Kazooie. I just leaped Boggy, so... That's one strategy. If ever given the opportunity, go ahead and take it. And there's the race again. And just the shoes will run out whenever you cross the finish line. There's no real timer on it, so... Dope, I've lost again. Take my other medal. Off to look for my... Oh, finally, you're not a deadbeat anymore. Thank you for not being a jackass. Dun dun dun. Oh, that stupid little dance. We have to see that dance roughly, I don't know, I would say 80-ish times, because you pick a couple up when you're swimming, and then you pick a couple up when, uh... Oh, fuck, I don't remember. Flying or some shit. When you're an, when you're an animal, you don't have to see that stupid little dance, but roughly 75 times in this game, you're going to have to see that dance happen. Anyways, Waz is not guarding her cave anymore. I think Waz is a she, I don't know. Or a pussy if he's a boy. Eek! The bear again. Take that noisy orange thing with you. And leave poor Waza alone. I hate that I can't speed up that dialogue. But anyways, so here we'll find a Jinjo. Along with the Jinjo, we get our puzzle piece. Alright. Number 10. Oh, the presents. My bad. I was asking my girlfriend where the 10th puzzle was, but I don't remember. Oh god, I didn't mean to go in there. Anyways, if you're playing the Nintendo 64 version, this will be blocked off. There will never be a way to get through this. It'll just be like an ice wall. And you're going to peek through here. There will be an ice key over there. If you're playing the Xbox 360 version, it's, this is more of, that, yeah, more of that stop and swap stuff. I don't know if it'll be open in the beginning or if you'll have to... Um, if you'll have to beat the game first. But then you can come in here, you pick up the ice key, and the ice key is more of that stop and swap jibber jabber. I told you I would get into it later. There's really nothing in this room. I told you I would talk about it later, so I figured now's a good time since I'm just going to be running out of the level anyway. <clears throat> Stop and Swap was an idea that Rare had when they made the game for the Nintendo 64, where you were going to collect all this stuff in Banjo and Kazooie, and then they were going to make a sequel to the game, and when they made the sequel to the game, you were going to be able to use the stuff you collected in this game in the second one, and you were going to be able to do that by pulling out your Nintendo 64 pack and then jamming in the new game. Kind of like if you ever played Sonic and Knuckles for the Sega. Um, if you put that game in, you flip the top open, then you could put Sonic 2 in it, and then you could be Knuckles in there, or Sonic and 3, or Sonic and Knuckles. You would take the game pack out, put a new game pack in, and then it would work. And that was their idea. It was a really cool one. They were going to be able to switch stuff, or switch everything around. Not switch everything around. You pull out the uh, Banjo-Kazooie, pack and then you put in the next ba banjo kazooie 2 or whatever they were going to call it and then you could use the stop and swap stuff in there and it was supposed to give you some really cool upgrades and stuff like that but nintendo basically told them after the game came out they're like yeah we're not really comfortable we don't know if the nintendo can handle you pulling the game pack out in the middle of the game like that so don't do it so that kind of screwed their plans they still made a sequel to this game though i'm just going to talk about that later because i don't want to interfere with this so boggy being a deadbeat never found those presents for his kids but it's okay we got it and he's taking a nap now Take your present. You there, present. Merry fucking Christmas. Now we've all got presents. Here's something for you. And there's Jiggy number 10. Little dance number two. Getting all 10 Jiggies. And all the kids are happy and Boggy's still a deadbeat father. Fuck you, Boggy. I wish those kids would be quiet. Old Boggy needs some sleep. Wow, you suck as a parent. He woke up to tell me that, and then he went back to sleep. <laughs> oh, well. He's probably drunk again. Anyways, now that I've learned the uh, beak barge, I've got to go back to Gobi and clean up those final notes. Oh, there's a douchebag snowman out here now, too. 
I hit the granny switch, so something else is available. Oh god. I think I hit the thing for the flight pad? I don't remember. Oh, here we go. Alright, so this is the granny switch one. It's kind of a real bitch to do. As in, I may fuck it up once or twice and then just cut until I get it right. And the thing that makes it a bitch is this... Oh, god. Well, the thing that makes it a bitch is when you miss the shoes entirely and there's no way you're gonna get there. Yeah, that's another reason I went to Gobies first, is because the Gorny Switch thing you need from this, or from uh, this level, that shattering was the sound of the fucking puzzle piece breaking. But yeah, you need the shoes for this too, so that's why I went to Gobies first. Anyways, if I hit the shoes this time, this angle is really weird you have to take, and you can't exactly see where the wall is. I got lucky and I got it there. Another thing that sucks is you gotta go around monsters, and once you get there, you gotta push X, get off the shoes, and then jump before the flight pad breaks. Because a flight pad breaks when you run out of time. I'm actually surprised I got that on my first try. When I tried to do this the last time I played this game, probably a couple months ago. Um, or when I tried to do that part the last time I played this game, it took me it took me a few tries. But then you fly and you gotta fly through that tube. Come up here, and voila, jiggy. I've got this skirt, so when I'm thinner, it really makes me look a winner. I don't know if she said that one is. Yes this go around or not. You can kill this guy if you want, but there's really no point. I'm not going to, unless he hits me with that snowball. I don't know why I took off on the flight pad. I don't need it, but it's gonna gently roll down. Alright. Anyways, back to Gobies. This is the only time you're ever gonna need to backtrack in the game. Uh, free... Only time you're going to need to. I'm not going to say it's the only time you will, because you might miss something and have to go back, or buy... I don't know. Shit happens! That's the point I'm getting to, but if you do the game, uh, I'm not going to say right, but if you get everything on your first pass, you can get everything on your first pass through in every other level except these two. You're going to have to go back on one, and I like that there's no specific order that you're going to have to go back on, you're just going to have to go back on one. Yep, and once again, if you're playing the Nintendo 64 version, when you come back, if you did it like I did, you're going to see notes here and you're going to say, fuck, out loud, because you're going to remember you're going to have to clear up all of... All those notes again. Uh, more on the stop and swoop stuff. Actually, I should go get on the flight pad. What the hell am I doing? More on the stop and swap stuff. Uh, that whole Nintendo Rare thing. There are like nine eggs-ish. I don't know how many eggs there are. Maybe five. I have no, I have no fucking clue. And a nice key to get. And you can collect all that in the Xbox 360 version. It was intended for you to collect all that in the Nintendo 64 version, but it never happened. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what it does in the second Banjo Kazooie game on the Xbox 360 either, but come up here, beak barge that, you have 20-ish seconds to get to there. We needed the beak barge, that's the only new move we needed, uh, and that's why we were short on gobies, and then you can slide down there, it's easy enough. I mean, you're not for a crunch on time, as long as you do that. It's probably one of the easiest jiggies to get. Also, the final notes, which again, you do not want to, do not want to miss these, because I about crap myself when I look back at my totals and realize I was six notes short on gobies. I'm like, where the hell were they? But then... I remember it's the Xbox version and I had to go back to Gobies anyway, and they were in that spot I couldn't get to beforehand, so... Yeah, dick move if you're playing the Nintendo version, but not so bad on the Xbox. Hello, my friend. I'm Ruby. Can I be of some sort of help? No? Looking for a treasure, pipe boy. Very good. I see some up there. It's yours if you can get it. Yes? So, there's some, uh... There's a jiggy up there on the ceiling. I'm not gonna take the time to look at it, because I don't know if the camera can get to it. Just shittings into this thing. When the music starts, I hop on his head, but you don't have to. Uh, you can wait. The snake's gonna launch me up to the roof, and then I'm gonna get the jiggy. You don't have to be on his head. You can climb his neck. So if you fall off for whatever reason, you still have time to climb his neck. Oh yeah, you gotta jump. Whoops. There we go, jiggy 10. Look at that. I'll quit up on notes too. Yeah, you can climb his neck. Just figured I'd show you that. Look at his mouth. Oh, it stopped. That was weird. Anyways, and that's Gobi's Valley. That was it. We came back for those notes and that thing. I'm not a big fan of backtracking in games. I, I very much dislike when I have to backtrack in games, but it's not so bad here because it's only once, and it's not a big deal. If you come to this one first, you just go back to Preezy, and then you have a race with those shoes, and then that's the whole thing. I don't feel like burning myself because... Shoes are right here, so why not? They do tick really fast. I don't know why I jump. I'm pretty sure it's slower if you jump with these things on. 
It's not slower if you jump with the fast shoes on. It's not slower if you jump with Kazooie, but it is slower if you jump like that. So, I'm not gonna lie. Actually, I think I do. I about forgot what the next level was, but I'm pretty sure I got it on lock. Uh, the next level is not one of my favorites, and as a child, it scared the living shit out of me. But we'll know more about that when we get there. It's not in there. That's not what I want. Where am I going? Oh, I remember now. All right. <clears throat> I haven't been up here yet, and that's just because I haven't need. I didn't need to go up here yet. Let me get that note door in a second. 450. I'm way past that now. I think I'm at 600. Or right, I should be, anyways. I'm gonna come over here and uh, poop myself to get this door to open. And another cauldron. Activated a magic cauldron. Fine too. And I haven't found that cauldron is probably the stupidest cauldron in the game, in my opinion, because the next cauldron or the cauldron that it's connected to is literally in the next goddamn room over. And that's pointless to me. But there we go, 450. I have 600. You can come here after. I mean, you only have to be a little ways into Gobies or Freezes. You don't have to do either of those. As long as you learn the move. But where am I going? Oh, yeah. There's that guy. There's more shit in this room, but you can't get to it yet. For reasons you will see later. There's also this room here. It contains another level and some shit up there. But once again, you can't get to it for reasons you'll see later. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of, it sucks if you're new to this game, if you don't have a walkthrough or anything like that to guide you, because you will spend forever in those two, well, not maybe, maybe not the first one, but the second one, you'll spend a long time in there wondering what the hell you're supposed to do. But you can just bypass it completely, come through here, go up for air if you need to, because sometimes, well, sometimes if you get cocky like I do, you get stuck and drowned and then look like a jackass in front of everybody, but shit happens, am I right? All right, where am I going to? So there's a puzzle piece. Or a puzzle, I should say, up there. But you can't get to it like that. You have to come around. That fish will only chase you if you get super close. He's not like the shark from Treasure Trove Cove. Um, he's just kind of there. So I, I don't know. I never looked at him as aerobic threat or anything. But yeah, you gotta hop around. Jumping's easy enough. Come up here. Fill out the puzzle piece. And what do we got? Fill out the puzzle. I keep calling them puzzle pieces. Uh, unlock Mad Monster Mansion. That scared the shit out of me as a kid. Also, you can come around here. God damn it. I'm going back for the Mambo Head. Leave no Mambo Head behind except later when I hate the Mambo Heads. Where are you going there, pal? See, if you get real close, he might come and try to bite you, and then it looks kind of scary, but... I want that Mambo Head. I don't know why. I probably have enough now to get me through the rest of the game. Actually, no. I take that back. I would fall... Another airplane going by. Two in one day is really rare. There's a very small airport that I live by. That's goofy. Anyways. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this uh, second room here. Just because. to Because uh, there's something that happens later and it would make more sense if I showed you the room now. So. Off we go through the little creepy ass tube thing. That's the only time you're ever going to need to go into that room, by the way. Is just to unlock that, so. Oh, I usually stay and hang out. I like listening to Grunny. But yeah, this is... You could tell it's not high enough. Or it's not as high as it should be. But we take a look around. We got... That's the cauldron that connects to the one in the other goddamn room that I just got. Which is stupid. It's also going to be the first cauldron we connect, I think. If I'm reading that right. Gold feather way the hell up there. Entrance to a level is over that bridge. But we'll get to that later. And then an entrance to something even more cool. Up there. But like I said, ain't nobody got time for that right now. Let's head through, come back into the first room. There's some stairs, like, way the hell up in the first room, but we can't get there yet. So, I'm just gonna keep going. Come back out. And then we gotta head back into where the Gobi's puzzle was. Which is inside the witch's mouth, which is over here. Okay, I was like, where did the witch go? But I got it. Actually, yeah, I can wait. All right. No god. Don't fall into that lava. The lava's instant death, and you don't want instant death, so. Gobies is taking care of this path. I'm sure a lot of you saw this path before and were like, why the fuck didn't you go that way? And I had my reasons. There's another path over there. Yeah. Another path over there. Still, I had my reasons for not going that way. But, here we are. I don't want to walk that way because I can't get anything over there right now, and except Bruntilda. You saw her. And... Uh, it's really easy to fall off there and die, so check out behind these skulls because I'm 95% sure there's a mambo head behind one of them. 
but you gotta be, uh, you gotta be careful when checking out these skulls. Also, hey, Bruntilda, I knew there was something back there. 